So I said I wouldn't uh, bog you down with the sanding stuff, so here's just a quick little montage of some of the other little things I did. Um, patched up the holes where I ground through down to the wire and tin foil. Carved in the face. Um, I did this using both the needle files and the little handheld little hand drill. Uh, you might see it on the table there. This was mostly just to give me a guideline for where I wanted to insert the, um, like actually place the Sculpey to give the features a little bit more dimensionality, which you can see here. Um, gave me like a, a socket to kind of pop things into and it helped it to stay in place uh, long enough for me to cook it. Uh, unfortunately, I did a lot of the work off camera. But one of the things I did from there was working down the top of the head. As you recall, I added a lot of extra material there when I was first working on it, and then unfortunately I realized after the fact that it didn't look right. After talking to some people and showing them some photos, they said he doesn't need a five head. So I began sculpting that down and shaving it down, as you see here, using uh, various tools, and then more or less pressing a sanding block to the top of it and twisting it around a bit. And I repeated that process again and again until he was a little bit more proportional and looked a little bit more like a gondola should. On the face you can see I hit it with a little bit of pencil just to make those eyes pop because the beige tone of Super Sculpey tends to make all the features blend together and it makes it hard to see if things are really looking the way they should. From there it was the uh, priming process which is you hit it with some primer, you let it dry, you sand out the problem areas, you prime it again, and repeat until it looks right. I actually ended up using two different primers, um, one of which was a lighter gray filler primer, which helped me to kind of deal with some of the problem areas. I found uh, a couple little like pinholes and wrinkles in the, uh, I don't know if you call them wrinkles or cracks, um, but then I polished it up with a uh, dish towel, as you can see there. But I might do something about that. Like I'll I'll do a little video thing about that later. Um, from there, I wanted to take some time actually, like visualizing, planning out the mold, um, because in previous projects, uh, like previous molds I've made, it's been very straightforward. Um, you. It's a up and down straight piece. You <laughs> you pin it down. You you glue it down to a you know a mold box and you fill it up with silicone. Nice and easy. Uh, gondola is a little bit more of a an unusual shape, which makes the mold making process just a little bit more difficult. And a lot of what I was concerned with was one air bubbles getting trapped in the mold because it's always a problem that you want to watch out for, which is why I'm doing kind of these little. I don't want to call them simulations, but more or less drawing out how it would look in the mold and then flipping it over. Because the bottom of your mold becomes the top of your mold, and anything glued or affixed to the bottom becomes your pore hole. Um, pretty straightforward, but it's a thing you have to consider. How is the, the resin going to go into the mold uh, for one, and for two, how are you going to get the piece out of there? which is why I was thinking one part mold, two part mold. Uh, here I'm considering what if I suspend it upside down, which um, would give me kind of an elongated pore hole. Uh, but I, the issue I kept running into was how am I going to liberate the legs? Um, because that is the problem. The legs kind of bow outward, as you can see in the left hand there. Uh, they bow outward and then they kind of come back in towards the ankles, just a little bit, um, which was my fault, but all the same, it's something where like getting that out of the mold is going to be a little bit more troublesome. So all these different designs and all these different ideas I was testing out was trying to figure out what's going to be the easiest way to do this, uh, for one, and then um, what's going to be the best way to pull it out of the mold. Uh, which, um, as you'll see in a moment when I switch to the next page, uh, one of the things I was kind of looking out for was not wanting to split this apart in too many ways. Um, the issue I ran into with previous molds was that uh, the smooth-on Umu silicone 
is it's a nice silicone but it it has a habit of tearing almost a little bit too easily the uh, Illuminolite High Strength 3, which I used on the previous mold, was very stretchy, um, but it also kind of, like, uh, not so stretchy. Uh, what I ended up using, which you'll see in a little while, ended up being similar to the, the Illuminolite, in that it was a very tough, very stretchy silicone that didn't like to rip. Um, but it was also very, very dense, very... Uh, I don't want to say unforgiving, but it it caused me some problems just because it didn't have quite enough give and squish like I needed. Which, um, I mean, I suppose that's something I could have found out by checking the specs a little bit more closely. Uh, you know, finding the tensile strength and all that. But, um, yeah, that's... It's just something that you kind of learn from doing, um, especially especially the way I work. I, I tend to do better when I get hands-on with a uh, material rather than looking at the, the specs and listings, like, you know, saying it's a, uh, what's the word, the, the durometer scale, like, that, that doesn't register to me quite as much as actually being hands-on with it. Um, in the video here, you can see me toying with the idea of having like a um, a pour spout. Um, this is another mold making technique I've seen where you essentially uh, build a rig to suspend the piece up, so you end up with uh, kind of like an air channel where um, both material can go in and air can be pushed out. So in this in this model, it would be poured in through the feet. And then all of the material would flow all the way through and then fill up through that little J-shaped channel and then make its way out, which would uh, reduce the amount of air bubbles, the amount of, uh, like, the, the issues with stuff getting trapped in there. But still here, I'm having the issue of how am I going to liberate this, because if I do a seam straight up the back, it's still going to leave the legs trapped in there. Um no matter how I kind of suspend it. And I ended up, in retrospect, I should have just gone with my very first idea, which is just binding the feet to the uh, the base of the mold box. Um, but here you can see me kind of worrying that if I do it this way, it's going to rip off in a third chunk. Like I'm thinking this is gonna be like the Umu where if I split it too many ways and put too much pressure on it while I'm trying to um, pull the piece out of the mold, it's going to rip. And, um, of course it helps to have your piece on hand just to test and kind of get a, a, yet again, hands-on. I'm very tactile with how I handle these things. But, um, yeah, I toyed with some different ideas, and then eventually decided on the final way I did it, which turned out not to be that great. Uh, the mold ended up working fine, and you'll see that in the next video, but I got this brilliant idea where I would do it head down, feet up, with little air hole support rods going to the ankles. Um, I probably should have fixed the angle a little bit more so he was a little bit further back, but when you flip this over, his feet would be down, his head would be up which is good because that would mean less air bubbles trapped uh, in the legs. Um, but I assumed that this stuff would have just enough give, like the other silicones I've worked with, that pulling this out would just kind of squish the silicone in and the legs would just pop free. Didn't actually work that way. Um, but yeah, this this seemed like a, such a good idea. Um, and even though I'm kind of drawing this all down on the paper, I ended up going with a slightly different um, setup for this, and the pore holes ended up not being all that useful. But it was still, I mean, as, as, as unfortunate as it is to say this because it sounds kind of defeatist, it was a learning experience. It was something I tried doing because I thought it would work differently, and uh, it turned out not going so well. In the future, I won't do it like this again, but 
still because I took the time to learn how to do that <laughs> learn how to do it wrong or teach myself how to do it wrong I know not to do it that way next time so here you're seeing me set up the, the sort of reusable plastic barrier a um, little bit of double sided tape on there kind of spiraling it into the size I want but then I got this other idea and uh, I'm gonna tell you right now should have had this idea several days prior which is to get all of the measurements of my gondola using my calipers there little digital calipers to um, calculate the volume he would take up more specifically um, how much space he would offset within the mold which after calculating the size of the mold would allow me to determine uh, how much silicone I needed this is a good idea to do. I do suggest doing this, especially if you have a semi-normal sized piece of something to work with. Um, sometimes with smaller molds, you can just sort of guess at it and get away with um, just sort of doing what feels right and just sort of eyeballing the mixture. Um, but I should have done this before I had him primed up, glued down, affixed to this base. Um, turned out being all right I just had to kind of touch it up with a little bit of sandpaper uh, because unfortunately the calipers are pointy and the edges are they're not sharp but they're sharp enough to leave marks in primer luckily it didn't leave too much damage and I was able to go ahead and keep going without having to pull this entire thing apart uh, but yeah just for for future reference for your own mold making for my own lesson uh, yeah, take the time to actually figure this all out ahead of time. So what I had done was I calculated the rough volume, which I believe turned out to be about 2.75 inches cubed. Um, calculated the volume of the, the cylinder, which turned out to be about 31.8 inches cubed. Um, meaning I needed about 29 inches cubed of, uh, of silicone which one fluid ounce of silicone equals 1.8 cubic inches meaning I needed give or take about 16 fluid ounces of silicone now at first I was thinking it's a pretty large container uh, this seems like there's enough in there to possibly fill this up enough um, turns out it's not what I have here is bought from Michael's craft store it's just kind of a generic mold making silicone um, and it's it's very much like the Illumilite like it's almost identical in packaging size what's in the box how it's boxed up kind of the size of the container it's a little weird um, but long and short you mix one-fourth fluid ounce of catalyst for every uh, two fluid ounces of base pretty simple um, nothing special there uh, eventually of course I decided instead of doing the cylinder which would have a lot of space on the sides and a lot of wasted material to do a box because I could kind of close it in a little bit tighter um, and that did end up saving me quite a bit of silicone but after a little bit of deliberation and you'll see here in a moment after kind of playing with it and cleaning it up and making it fit shaping down the pegs so they wouldn't be so close to the wall and adding a little bit more glue so they wouldn't move um, turned out that uh, I did still need to go out and buy a little bit more silicone um, of course hot gluing everything together and all that uh, this is just some basic foam core um, kinda getting, getting distracted here but uh, foam core it's two sheets of paper with a layer of foam sandwich in between it. It's pretty common material. Um, you can find it at the dollar store. Big old sheets of it for a dollar. Um, you can find a lot of great things at the dollar store. And when I finally get around to doing a dollar store video, that's going to be a lot of fun. But yeah, I, I did all the steps as usual. Um, here you're going to see me spraying in the, the mold release. Uh, and then filtering it out with my little air filter I keep that thing around both for sanding uh, anything I'm sanding just keeping that thing close by just because it reduces the amount of dust in my room 
as well as um, reducing the amount of dust that I'm breathing in. Um, cleaning off my camera just so there's no mold release stuff getting on there. But um, yeah, this is all just the usual steps. Uh, setting up the mold release ahead of time instead of before I'm ready to pour the silicone because it does need a few minutes to dry. Not terribly long. You don't need to give it like overnight or anything. Just uh, five, ten minutes. Um, so it helps to do this ahead of time. Um, from here, just a matter of getting everything ready and then uh, not realizing I've set myself up for disappointment. You can see I'm even kind of rolling up my sleeves, getting ready to do this. Um, pouring silicone isn't a a strenuous process, uh, but it is, it requires a lot of focus. You need to be kind of paying attention to what you're doing the entire time, so it helps to kind of have your head clear, your workspace clear, everything ready to go. Um, getting out my little mixing cups, I tend to reuse those a lot. Cracking my knuckles for theatric effect, because I'm a dork. And then, um, this is about the wrap-up of the video. You may notice there's still a bunch of minutes left, but here's a long and short of what happened. The little dinky camera I bought off Amazon for 30 bucks died after this. I started getting ready to pour the silicone, started setting everything up, and then I realized I didn't have enough. So I took a few moments and I'm thinking, how am I going to do this? How am I going to make this work? Do I go back in and add some little... Uh, little bit more material to the corners of the mold to narrow it in to so I need less silicone do I make the mold over what do I do I'm going through all this and I eventually decide you know what it's still early in the evening Michaels is still open I checked their website they got a 50% off coupon which is perfect um, and so after pouring out all the silicone and realizing I didn't have enough I scoop it all back into the container uh, it turns out I didn't like it didn't go bad on me, which is good. Um, typically, uh, you can you don't have to worry about opening your silicone and having it go bad right away because you didn't use it all. But it's still pretty bad to um, pour it out and then pour it back in. There's there's a risk of contaminating it with other materials, and that's that's just not good. But nonetheless, I went out, bought a second silicone kit, same exact stuff I'm using here. So it mixes together, no problem. And I go to turn my camera on. Doesn't turn on. Plug it in, or remove the plug, plug it back in. Turns on for a second, turns off again. It's effing dead. I'm working on getting that replaced, but I start asking myself, how am I going to do this? Like, uh, do I hold off and wait until I get my camera fixed to finish the video? Do I just do it? What do I do? What's more important? I decided it's more important that I actually finish the project. Uh, I mean, the sooner it's done, the sooner I can start working on something else or get to producing more or fixing my mistakes. So I go ahead, I pour the silicone, I finish out the mold. Yeah, you've seen me here, giving the X, no, no, this won't work. And then this is where I'm contemplating my next move. Like I said, I eventually decide to go get more silicone, and I pour it out. Um mold ends up turning out all right it's just not ideal um, what did end up happening was uh, it turns out my cell phone actually takes some pretty darn good video so I end up doing the next part of this on my phone so the next video you see is going to be recorded with my phone for for better or worse um, I end up using the uh, what they call the bombs away method for pouring the silicone, just in case you care. May as well finish this up. Bombs away method is keep the, sil uh, the, the mold itself as low as possible and you pour the silicone from as high as possible, creating a very thin strand which gets rid of as many air bubbles as, uh, as you can and fills the mold very slowly so it has time to very, very carefully seep into all the details of the mold. Um, not that silicone won't normally capture very fine detail, but doing that method is very good just in case, uh, say for instance, the, the mouth of the gondola, it's a little inset. If I poured too quickly and the silicone just globbed on there, it might create an air bubble in there, and I would be left with 
the completely wrong shape when I pull from the mold. So I'm going to put some pictures on screen. There's only a couple of them of uh, the pouring process, or rather the the mold being made, and I think that's gonna it's gonna be it for the rest of the video. There's really not much else to show. Um, part four, the opening of the mold and uh, first casting, will be coming sooner or later. But I think from now on, uh, once I get my camera stuff sorted out, I'm gonna be doing it on my phone. We'll see how that goes. And uh, if that works out, then it works out. But, yeah. Uh, if you enjoyed this, you know the drill. Comment, like, etc. Follow me on social medias. Um, if you are someone who knows better than I do, and you have tips or tricks to share with me, do share them. If, um, if you're interested and you have questions, let me know. Uh, if you found this educational or... If you want to know where to start, maybe I'll make a video on that. If there's something you want to see me make, if there's uh, if there's a project you want to see me work on, let me know. Um, we'll see if I can do that. Uh, I've got a list of stuff I want to work on, but if if I if there's audience demand, um, I would be fine with caving into that. Because as fun as it is to make stuff for its own sake, having an audience to share it with and kind of uh, talk about is is also very interesting to me uh, and I would like to not necessarily offer uh, an educational platform but perhaps just kind of share in the knowledge I've accrued so yet again if if you're interested in more of my stuff do watch uh, if you got questions ask them and if you got suggestions give them and I will see you in the next video Bye.